Jesus Christ's role in the creation itself. These following scriptures were real eye-openers to me as a lifelong atheist, especially their real-world implications. So I want to go over them and give an explanation of what they mean to me. We'll start in the Gospel of John. John 1.1 1, 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. That was the true light which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. These scriptures say that Jesus Christ is God himself that was made flesh. It says that he created all things. In other words, our objective reality itself. It says that he is the spiritual light that exists within every single person who's ever come into existence. Now Colossians 1, 16 through 17. For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him, and he is before all things, and by him all things consist. Then Hebrews 1.3, And upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. This again clearly states that Jesus Christ created all things, visible and invisible. That includes our physical reality, Lucifer, time, laws of physics, mathematics, and the laws of logic. But it also says that he's the one that holds all things together and keeps reality and time itself moving forward by the word of his own power. Then Acts 17 says, God that made the world and all things therein, being that he is Lord of heaven and earth, dwelleth not in temples made with hands. For in him we live and move and have our being. This scripture says that our very own existence and being is within Christ. Then Romans 11.36 reinforces that scripture. For of him and through him and to him are all things. With those scriptures now being read, we as Christians understand that Christ is only one person in a co-eternal, co-equal Holy Trinity along with the Father and the Holy Spirit. They're just as involved in the creation and sustainment of our reality as Christ is. But this video is specifically about Jesus Christ's active role in our creation and its implications. If you watch my personal Christian testimony, I initially opened the Bible as a skeptic looking for answers to secular philosophy. I thought that the idea of a personal creator, sustainer, Lord, and Savior was crazy. But I thought that accepting countless blind faith commitments as a supposed free-thinking atheist was even crazier. If you're like I was as an atheist and are not aware of just how massive naturalism's blind faith really is, it's literally the entire immaterial world that's completely unaccounted for and just dogmatically accepted. From life itself, our minds, our personhood, information, knowledge, truth, logic, free will, to everything that makes us human. Everything that makes our reality intelligible to us. Well, as I was learning about the absurdity of naturalism, I was also reading those scriptures about Jesus Christ. Then I started reading the biblical claims that we were made in Christ's fallen, immaterial image. That we all know this truth of our condemnation and are actively suppressing it. That it's Christ's invisible attributes that we clearly see that leave us without an excuse. I slowly realized that that's exactly what our immaterial reality is designed and sustained to do. Every person is forced to live their lives according to this truth, because we will all be held accountable as individuals for our free decision to accept or reject His grace when our lives end. There will be no excuses. So when Jesus Christ calls Himself the I Am that I Am and the Alpha and the Omega, those titles have massive spiritual and philosophical implications. The mind of Jesus Christ is what's known as the metaphysical necessity, the only one self-existent entity that all other existence emanates from, the one entity that cannot fail to exist. He provides us with this spiritual immaterial software so we can freely acknowledge our condemnation. 
Naturalists must accept this spiritual reality on blind faith to avoid acknowledging their own spiritual condemnation. I'm pretty sure that this stuff isn't as interesting to most Christians as it is for me, but that's the beauty of biblical Christianity. We all come to the scriptures from different angles and personal experience. We all discover and accept the truth and grace of Jesus Christ along the way. Then we try to glorify him and spread his gospel the best way we can. But we're also called to help strengthen and grow each other in our faith while we're here on earth. Christians strengthen their faith in various ways. I am not an experience-driven person when it comes to my personal faith. I can't even attend church because of my OCD condition. My personal relationship with Jesus Christ and the rest in my soul that he gives me daily, that's all the spiritual experience that I'll ever need. As a skeptical Christian, though, who's solely looking for the truth, it's been learning about and understanding this aspect of Jesus Christ and the literal truth contained in the Bible. Those things have strengthened my faith more than anything. Hopefully they can help somebody else strengthen and defend their faith as well.